5,365 pounds. The new Catalina 221 bunkhouse Murphy bed camp kitchen U dinette slide here at Halet RV of Goldwater, Michigan. And you've seen layouts like this in the business for many, many years, but they've almost always been laminated, more expensive type models. And the fact is not everybody has the want or need for something in that budget range. And it's awesome that we finally have a really good, strong contender for something that's far more, uh, you know, effective, but budget friendly. The idea behind this trailer is to try to give you as much living space as possible in as short of a towing length as possible. And they are successful in that, but it does make certain things a little challenging. Everything is a push and a pull. The one hiccup that means is that our travel accessibility becomes, I guess you could say compromised, but I don't think it's entirely gone. So at a glance, you're like, yeah, but I definitely can't get through there. Well, you could very easily just you know, kind of do the butt scoot boogie or just climb on your knees uh, around that table. Alternatively, you could just take that table out uh, for transit and keep it somewhere like maybe on the bunks or store it somewhere perhaps behind the sofa here. And if you do that, then you just have to step over this one bench here real quick, which not very hard. You don't need big long legs. My legs help, but you don't have to do that. And then, voila, we're in, buddy. We can get to the bathroom, the bunks. The, uh, you could, I suppose, reach around the corner to the pantry. They probably should have put the pantry doors on this side, but you, it's still not that bad. You can still get to it. You can get to the bath area. It becomes pretty travel accessible. Now, the one thing here, you will not be able to use the Murphy bed without opening up the slide, but in theory, you could probably, if absolutely required, you could probably make do for a night on that seven-foot true u dinette. But I really got to say... Uh, considering they brought this into uh, that, that more budget-sensitive price point, I'm very impressed with how well they executed this layout. You can do this one really right, or you can do it really wrong. And they really, really nailed everything that matters here. And if, you know, you're new to RVing, not everybody has been watching these videos for years. What are you looking at here? Well, this is a Murphy bed model, because you might notice we're looking at the front of the trailer here. I've got bunks right next to me where I'm standing, and you don't see a normal bed. And that's what's kind of cool about this one. This is kind of two floor plans in one. You get to really sort of double dip the space here. And that's what's great, is that this is, it has the features of a 6,700 pound super slide bunkhouse camper, all smashed down into a 5,300, uh, you know, dinette only slide camper. That's the cool part about Murphy beds. You get all the same sleeping and seating, but without the extra length, weight, and cost. By contrast, if you're not new to watching RV videos or learning about these things, you might very quickly recognize this layout from Rockwood called the 2509S Rockwood Mini Light. And I'm pretty sure somebody over there at the Coachman Catalina plant was aware of that too because they did a pretty good job of mimicking all the things that are really important here, including something Rockwood does well that usually at a more entry-level budget gets really Mickey Mouse pretty hard. And that is, this has a really good Murphy bed. This is a one-piece mattress. This is, uh, it's a, just a single mattress. It's not like a folding, what I call bendy bed. And whenever you start having wood studs and trailers, that is almost always what you end up having to settle for. So it's a simple, easy one-piece bed. It's on a pivot to make lifting it up and down very simple. Over here in the corner, you see that black knob sticking out. That is the release for the locking system, so it's a safety lock Murphy bed, so you're not going to get lawn chaired up in the head of that thing. You're not going to end up on some, like, you know, blooper show where you're, you're trapped inside of that thing. Plus, we've got dual opposing cross-through breeze windows, but take a look at the big breeze window over here on the campsite. It is wider, it is taller, um, you know, and it does actually open for airflow, which is something uh, not every camper can say. So you can wake up, you hear your kids making noise or whatever. You can just kind of peek out there, see what's going on, check who's at the front door. We've got our dual hanging wardrobes, just like a normal bed. We've got our side stands with outlets, so we're very CPAP friendly, just like a, a normal bed. The only difference here is that when it's daytime and you're ready to, you know, expand your living space, you can just put the bed away and get all of that extra room 
and basically have the same seating of a super slide camper. Again, without the extra length, weight, and cost. That's the real kicker. Another thing I was surprised to see here, pleasantly surprised at that, is the inclusion of a privacy curtain right here, because that's the one thing Murphy beds give up. You kind of give up privacy, but you can pull that shade shut, and it does give you kind of a visual line of sight break point between the front master bed and, uh, you know, everything else back here. And what's neat is you still have nice little side stands, and you've still got full separate storage below the sofa, so you don't lose anything inside. You just gain extra living space when you need it. That's the cool part about how they did this. They did it right, so you're not giving anything up. You're only gaining in the push-pull. Even the, the little touches, like just those extra little pillows right there, it's not a major deal, but pillows, side stands, those are every single day user functional items. Having power outlets on each side of the bed and or sofa. Those kind of things are the sort of things that, you know, if you lack those in an RV, it really negatively affects how you use the camper. Now, one of the things I should have talked about much, much sooner is the fact that this does have a taller interior. This has a six foot nine interior height if you measure from the floor to the ceiling panel, which means if you're walking under something like that central air conditioner right there, you're not gonna run the risk of bumping your head. You might also notice for an entry level camper, they've got a whole bunch of lights in this thing and you can control them all individually. So you can really kind of customize what you want lit up and what you, what you don't, you know? Um, the uh, other thing that's really nice here, we've got this, with the taller ceiling, we have a taller slide out, which makes room for a little bit bigger windows. And down below, as I mentioned when the slide was closed, we've got a seven foot true u dinette. So you can really get the whole family wrapped around that thing and enjoy a nice family meal together. And if it's larger, capable of sitting more people, then it's larger and capable of sleeping more people. The one naturally very much goes with the other. And through the slide to maintain privacy and to keep the sun out if need be, you do have pleated shades that you can draw. But true to Coachman form, the Coachman is excellent about really smart, effective storage space. You've got that nice pantry space right here, and this is really important. We'll come back to the reason why this is important in a minute here. But for that stuff you don't use every day, but it's big and bulky and you can't live without it, you've got plenty of room for that sort of stuff here. You know, right below the dinette seating is some huge chests of storage space. Now, real quick, take note of the dining table. Just like the kitchen, just like the bathroom, it's a sealed edge uh, thermal foil countertop. There are a lot of campers that started using that stuff in the kitchen now, which is good. But Coachman has been doing this for years, and you'll notice they do it not just the kitchen. They do it everywhere, and you can really maximize the good, effective countertop space that you get here uh, by adding the optional sink covers like we've done here. They're made with the same material, so they fit flush, they look absolutely awesome, and they really do give you good counter prep space here. Now, remember I said that pantry is really important. They did the same thing here that Rockwood did in the 2509S, and at a first glance, it's a little harder to absorb. You're like, oh, I don't know, this is different. I like, It's weird, I'm not comfortable with it. But they made this the entertainment wall. If you choose to add a TV to this, mount a little swing arm bracket right there, it can directly face the dinette, which almost no little camper TVs do. It could pivot out to face the front sofa or the master bed. You could make it do a little bit of whatever you want. Now at a glance, you're looking and saying, yes, but I gave up cabinet space. And the answer is no, you didn't. It's just been moved. They gave you this nice vertical pantry over here, which provides more cubic foot of storage space and it is easier to reach than one small overhead cabinet could offer. Now down here, if we wrap around the counter, they did a very good job of laying this out. You've got triple plywood full extension drawers. I love how that top drawer has that little utensil organizer. Nice big open pocket under the stove so you can actually get there to get to things. And you do have a good cabinet right here. If you want to put yourself a little wastebasket, you do have the space to do it. This is simple. It's inexpensive, but it is excellent execution. Although we're, you know, I say inexpensive. They did still use plywood full extension drawers. They could have gone to particle board with a sticker app. But they didn't. They did what really matters. Plus, one of the benefits of having a wood skeleton sidewall instead of a laminated wall is you have far, far easier ability to install from the manufacturing side and from the consumer side to use household outlets. As, you know, uh, instead of a laminated camper that always has outlets like under the overhead cabinets, you don't have that problem here. 
Now there's an easy thing to miss over here. In this class and category, it's one of the largest you can get, and that's the refrigerator. It's a seven cubic foot fridge freezer. So you're getting 17% more cold storage here than you typically get in this class and category. We've got our double-double bunks in the corner, just like the big Catalina Legacies. Nice big storage chest kind of area below, great for duffel bags or, you know, that's where you're probably gonna have a lot of the kids' clothes. You'll slide them open in like totes. You know, each kid have their own tote. Now that taller ceiling, remember, does allow for taller bunks. Each bunk gets a little more space. And notice how each bunk doesn't just have a window, but they have a breeze window. And that's something that, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> I don't know what just, I'm literally just choking on thin air over here, but entry level campers very often do not have ventilating windows over here. Uh, the bathroom, simple but effective. They do a couple things here. I really want to point out though, more of that sealed edge countertop stuff and a big vanity, not just a mirror glued against the wall. Also, there are some trailers in this class of category do not get skylights, do not get shower surround panels. And you see that all of that is here. It's a fully featured bathroom. And that's one of the other things that Coachman's very good at, I've noticed, whether it's these Catalinas at Halet RV or the Freedom Expresses or Apexes. They really make sure they are function first and fashion second. But I think they've done a good job of giving you a little bit of both here. I do like the cosmetic look that they have going on with these Catalinas right now. It's just got a real sharp package. The very modern linear lines as opposed to the Nike Adidas swooshes. A lot of RVs have adopted that, but I think for good reason. I think a lot of people just got tired of the swooshes. If I can direct your attention down toward the stabilizer jacks, it's an easy thing to miss. But the fact that they're kind of angle mounted right there, that will help with some campsite stability to help take some of that seasick wiggle out of there. That in conjunction with the stable step entry door upgrade that we'll talk about in a few minutes, those two things help immensely. Uh, it's very obvious that we have that like painted uh, aluminum sweep on the front, but what you don't realize is it's much thicker than the uh, sidewall aluminum. So the whole thing is basically going to be headwind resistant and it helps deflect stones, keeps the trailer looking good. Another thing that's easy to miss, we gotta get right up close and personal to see it, is the seal gripping slide wall system that we have here. This really rough textured skin, it really grabs these slide wiper seals, and I say plural, because you can see they are internally and externally wiper sealed. And then there's a third bulb seal matching this on the inside of the RV. So fully extended or retracted there's always three points of contact on these slides to make sure you're not getting water penetration which is a fancy flowery word for leaking now down here you can see we do have an enclosed belly so you are going to get some of that extra critter protection and a little bit of an extra boost against uh, those little weather snaps something I don't know that we really as a whole in the industry and I know that I don't talk about it enough is how something this simple can actually help you in the summertime as well because it's helping prevent your air conditioning from bleeding through the floor since obviously cold air goes down. You can walk all over the roof of one of these. We've got a 3 8 roof decking with 16 inch on center roof trusses, which is pretty much the definition of walkable. But a couple more key details that are easy to miss here. We've got tinted windows. In this class, seems like about half of RVs have it, half of RVs don't. Costs a little bit more money, but it also helps keep a lot of that heat and solar radiation out of the RV. It gives you more privacy. It also helps keep your furniture from fading. Um, down below here, take a look at the fender skirt. It's a real bright, shiny aluminum. Now, visibly, it just looks really good, but as compared to plastic fender trim, it won't, like, weather fade and fall apart and deteriorate just from getting wind buffeted on the road. That trim right there will always stay in basically the same shape it is right now, unless you do something like accidentally run into it with a lawnmower, you know? Spare tire on the back here. I hope you never need it, but I sure hope you got one if the time arises. And isn't it nice that they put the slip cover on there so that when you do need it, if you need it, uh, you don't have to deal with the uh, spare tire being like dry rotted. Now, in a, a lot of RVs, our backup camera ready, but here in the starter class, which is kind of what the SBX or uh, soon to be called Summit Series represents, there are still some that don't offer that feature. And I don't care if it's a starter class camper. I know that there are some folks who really like that extra peace of mind and security to be able to see behind them in transit, whether they're moving or, you know, just backing into a parking space. And they did a few really clutch details here that are easy to miss, but things that you really appreciate once you own the RV, they did them so, so right. They gave you the biggest awning they could on this guy. 
and you notice it completely covers the camp kitchen. It also goes far enough past the main entry door that that door will never be able to hit and or interfere with the awning. So there are some times like if you have the, uh, the door open on some campers and you try to close the awning, you could actually catch the awning arm and booger it up, but you don't have that happen here. That's a scientific term, by the way, booger it up. So we've got LED lights in the speakers and under the uh, awning, which obviously has auto rain dump, but it also has a tilt and lock system. Basically, you just pull on this awning arm, it telescopes down, you crank that little star nut right there a little bit, which was my grandmother's nickname for me, you little star nut. <laughs> that may or may not be true. Um, and you can tilt the awning, basically. Now, the, the camp kitchens, they do the low-profile camp kitchen on these is simple, but really smart and effective. I actually kind of like it. Um, so of course we got the little Everchill mini fridge over here. That in conjunction with the fridge inside gives us about nine cubic foot of total cold storage. Don't forget how both fridges kind of play off of one another. And then over here, we've got more of that sealed edge counter stuff and you see in that pocket in the upper right, this does come with that Coleman camp grill. But what's nice is it doesn't, it's not like a stove top that's eating up counter space. If you want to get it out of there, and you want to just use that for prep space, you want to just keep it stowed away, or you want to use that camp grill somewhere else, there's nothing saying that you can't. It's actually pretty darn cool like that. So we've got that larger folding entry handle, and then down below, we have the optional stable step upgrade that you can see we've applied to this one here. Remember that the one in stock we have could be a little different, but we like to put these on just about any camper, just about every single chance that we have to really make it so like, it eliminates that queasy seasick feeling. You know, as people tend to come and go in and out of the camper, it avoids that rocking and rolling feeling. And especially in a bunk model like this, you should probably expect to have a lot of people, little kids jumping in, jumping out. Although the camp kitchen, giving them a place to keep some food and drinks outside, that will help cut down on that quite a bit. And overall, I think this is a successful new addition to the Catalina family. If you agree, give us a call. Leave a little comment. If you disagree, what would you like to see different? I'm always open to feedback. I didn't build the thing. <laughs> I don't take it personal. If there's something that you like or dislike you'd like to see otherwise, let us know. We'll pass it along to the manufacturer. No big deal. Short of that, know that we don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.